Good morning from Strive Academy. Good morning. Here we should get to the Chavrilla bus. Good morning. We have begun our first morning of school at home, so it's been a very hectic morning for us too. So we're just going to wait a few minutes and let everyone get on. But good morning if you're just joining us. We're taking a science break from our schooling that we've been doing this morning. We've been doing a bunch of language arts and math. Have you guys enjoyed it? No. No. Cool it's kind of easy math, stuff. Really. I have easy stuff. Okay. Well, if it's too easy, we got to make it harder. No. It is hard. Now, I know a lot of people hi, are... Hi, hi, hi Shayna. Hi, Shayna. Hi, Cece. Hi. I know a lot of people are stressed about homeschooling their kids. We've kind of... I, just a suggestion. What I've done is I've gone through the work that my kids have to do, and I've made them a checklist for each day because looking at a whole week or two weeks is very overwhelming. Um, so for each day, I, I print out, I'm printing out a checklist and just kind of letting them go through at their own pace and giving them choice about what they do first and second and so on. Um, say hi to Cece, Lila, and Tilly. Hi, Cece, hi, Cece. Hi, Lila, Lila, Tilly. And so far this morning, that's worked. Um, you know, the older two are much more independent. Um, mm. With Bailey, I, I have to read a lot out loud to her, but I'm still just letting her kind of go through at her own pace. And um, so for those of you kind of struggling because you feel like you all of a sudden have to turn into a homeschool teacher, uh, you really don't. You just need to set up a little bit of structure. And especially if you can keep it somewhat consistent to how your kids do it at school, like ask them how they do it. Um, and my kids help me with that. And, you know, they're so used to a routine at school that they can really follow it themselves. So, um, for those of you just joining us, welcome. We're excited today. We're going to do a little March Madness activity. Um, I have, I've got my helpers here. So, Bailey, we remind everyone what grade you're in. Um, kindergarten. <laughs> it's been a long week. Dylan, what grade are you in? Uh, third. And Harper? So just a reminder that as you're doing these activities, you can definitely, um, you know, change them or modify them based on how old your kids are and what their capabilities are. So feel free to, to change anything that we do. Make it your own. Um, don't forget if you don't have the same materials, that's totally fine. I added a material last night when I was making an example. Um, so whatever works best for you is great for us. Um, so again, if you're just joining us, we're going to do a little bit of March Madness today. We're, the Hunt Girls are taking a break from our first morning of um, home learning, which has been, it's gone pretty well so far, right? Um, but they were happy to get a break from doing their schoolwork too. So, a um, couple of things that I want to mention before we get started, just while people are joining us. Um, first of all, next week we're going to be doing um, an experiment that uses Alka-Seltzer. And, you know, we realize that this probably isn't the time to ask people to go out and buy supplies. So, if you have Alka-Seltzer, great. Um, if you don't, we are going to put a Google form on our website, which is www.striveacademy.org. And if you need Alka-Seltzer, just fill out the uh, Google form and we will send you some. Uh, might be kind of fun to get something in the mail right now anyway. Feel free to put your kid's name as the name so that they get the envelope instead of you in the mail. Um, but that's one thing you can check out. Okay. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that um, we're going to start offering some digital breakouts. Um, at Strive Academy, we use breakouts a lot. We usually do physical breakouts, and the kids really enjoy them, um, where they have to solve some clues and open up a bunch of locks to open a box and find their prize. Um, since we can't do physical breakouts right now, we are 
working on creating some digital breakouts. Um, it's a first for us, so be patient with us. Um, but later today, we're going to post our first digital breakout on our website, again, at striveacademy.org. And you can do that at any time. Um, all that your kids will need is a device. They can use an iPad or a computer and probably just a piece of paper and a pencil to try to solve the clues on. Um, but all of the clues are there, the story's there. Um, there's a button at the top where they'll submit their answers and it'll tell them if they're correct or incorrect. Um, so it might just be something kind of fun for the kids to do. And I tried it with my own kids yesterday. It kept them busy for about 30 to 40 minutes. So um, I'd highly recommend having your kids try it this week um, if you need a little break. You want to say hi to Stella and Janie and Reed? Hi, Stella. Hi, Janie. And Reed? Hi, Reed. Okay. All right. So today we are going to be doing a little um, March Madness. And so the goal today is to create something um, that we can uh, get a ball into the basket. So since March Madness was canceled, we thought, why not make our own? Oh, Joellen's watching. Everyone say hi, Joellen. Hi, Joellen. Um, and so the first thing that you're going to want to do is either on a piece of paper or if you printed the worksheets from our website at striveacademy.org, is go ahead and fill in the title. And you're gonna fill in um, the hypothesis. And so the question that we're gonna answer today um, is how many baskets do you think you can make in one minute? And again, you're gonna be making your own structure, um, but you can see here that I made a basketball hoop. I have some kind of throwing device. Um, and so the question is, how many baskets can you make in one minute? So go ahead and fill in your title and your hypothesis. You wanna say hi to Miss Miller? Hi, Miss Miller. Miller. Bailey, you wanna say hi to Emma? Hi, Emma. We got to FaceTime with Emma yesterday. It's a great suggestion if your kids are getting bored being separated from their friends, um, is to FaceTime them. You can do a group FaceTime, and it was, it was really fun for us for a while. Oh, Mama's on. Hi, Hi Mama. Mama. Do it. No, I think she would. Okay, so again, um, you should have filled in your title, and you should have filled in your hypothesis, which is how many baskets can you make in your basketball hoop in one minute? Um, so I guess it'll depend on how good you are at making baskets. Um, the next thing that we're going to ask you to do on your paper is to sketch out your design. So it's important, um, A, to know what your supplies are, and B, to have an idea of what you're going to do. So I'll show you our supplies, and again, you can, you can do this however you want. Um, we're using cardboard, and we're, you can see that I just cut out pieces of cardboard. Um, Amazon boxes are the best because they're so thin, so shout out to Amazon boxes for that. We have scissors. We have scissors. We have popsicle we sticks. We have tape. We yeah, found some popsicle cleaners. sticks. Straws. We have pipe. straws. Some pipe cleaners. Some pipe cleaners. And we have some and markers. Um, and we have markers. Can you guys say hi to Kate? Hi, Kate. Um, now, the other thing I added last night was um, a spoon. Okay, and you can, you know, these were just things that I found lying around my house. Um, you know, oh, at, yeah. at work or at Strive, yeah. I have a ton of materials, but I was kind of limited as to what I had here. So feel free to use any materials that you can find. Um, I started doing this with a bouncy ball last night and quickly realized I really don't want bouncy balls flying around <laughs> from all of my children doing this. So I just made a ball out of masking tape. Um, it's lighter, so it's a little bit easier to get in the basket, and when it doesn't make it in the basket, um, it doesn't make a mess or hit anything. Dylan just had a great suggestion. What else could you use, Dylan? A marshmallow. A marshmallow, yeah. A mini marshmallow would be awesome. Do you have to... Can you guys say hi to Braylon? Hi, Braylon. Okay, so right now, hold on one sec. Right now you should be sketching out your design, so based on whatever materials you're going to use, take a few minutes and just sketch out a plan. Um, it makes it a little bit easier if you have a plan because then you don't waste materials. You have an idea of what you're going to do. 
Uh, the one thing I will say, and even as I was doing this last night, you're going to have to do a lot of testing and modifying. So you'll, you'll build it, and then you'll try it, and you'll see that something doesn't work, and you have to change it. And you might be changing materials, and you might be changing heights or lengths or um, angles, but just go into this knowing that you're going to be making modifications as you go. Um, do you have to have something to launch it with, or can you just throw it in? So that's a good question. It's your experiment, so you can do whatever you want. If you don't want to make a launcher, um, you're welcome to just try to toss it into the basket. Um, we made a launcher out of um, some popsicle sticks to kind of get it off of the ground and a plastic spoon. And it's kind of hard to do this um, while I'm holding it, but whoops. Just put it down there. You can see, thanks, Joe. But we can launch it pretty high if we want. If I give it a little bit less force, we can launch it a lot lower. So um, again, just use whatever you have. Okay, the next step, and we're not going to make you watch us do this. We're going to build when we're finished here, um, is to build. And, you know, when we were working on this yesterday, I mean, this took a good, you know, 25, 30 minutes. You could, you know, we drew a very simple basketball court, but if you have a child who's really into this or who's really into sports, they can definitely add a lot more art to this. Um, so or, you can make it, you know, you way more make, steam. Like, a different, like, are you going to make soccer? Or? Oh, that's a great question. That's a great question, Bailey. So if you are into um, different sports, absolutely. Make it a soccer field. Make it a lacrosse field. Make it a football field, whatever works for you. Um, once you're done building, then on your paper, we're going to ask you to draw a picture of what your final project looks like. Um, we know that probably what you go into it thinking it's going to look like is a little bit different than what it will actually look like. So go ahead and make some comparisons as you're doing that and kind of think about, well, why does it look different and what could you do or couldn't you do? Um, after you have it drawn, okay, go ahead and test it. And so, as I said before, you're going to have to keep experimenting and modifying and retesting and redoing. Um, and so as you're building, make sure that you're constantly testing. Um, we had to do that last night with the height of the backboard and where we had to figure out where to place the spoon how far back to pull the spoon. So there's lots of different things that you're gonna have to experiment with. Um, once you're ready to test, the question again that we're trying to answer is how many baskets can you make in one minute? So once you're ready, go ahead and set a timer for one minute and time yourself and see how many baskets you can make. Record that under your data um, and results and then you know, for good scientific practice, we want to do it more than once. So I would recommend doing it maybe three or four times. Um, your analysis questions today are number one, to calculate the average. So again, for the average, you're going to add up all of your baskets and then divide it by however many trials you did. Um, the second question is, what adjustments did you have to make? So just do a little bit of reflection. Um, of you know what worked well and what didn't what did you find you had to test and retest and modify as you went um the third question is what had a bigger effect on your throwing device so that would be like your catapult here did the angle that you had it at have a bigger effect or did the whoops the force that you had to push down on have a bigger effect oh i can't see her first Okay, and then finally, um, did it work better if your goal or your basket was closer or farther away from your catapult? And I, we had to experiment a little bit with this last night. Is it better to put the goal here or to move it forward um, or to move your catapult? Once you've answered the questions, we do have a couple of extensions if your kids are really having fun with us. Um, so one thing that you can do, again. you can always make it again. Um, is you can add some constraints to it. You can even do this for the first one. Um, so for example, throw some math into it. Tell your kids that it has to be six inches above the ground. Um, tell your kids that the catapult has to be so far away from the basket 
or that the basket has to be this wide or this tall. Um, so th definitely throwing math into it helps. Yeah. Um, if you really like it, you can also make it any time. Yeah, you could. Okay, uh, what I think would be really fun and what we're gonna do here in the Hunt House later is to make your own little March Madness competition. So since no. March Madness was canceled, maybe make some brackets and um, have you know some playoffs to see like who can get the most baskets in a, in one minute. Um, and we also threw a video on there as an extension. Um, you can see how some um, NBA sports players um, what the physics is behind them getting the ball into the basket. And if you go to um, the website that we linked you to, there's lots of videos on there. We have one in particular, but there's lots of cool videos if you have sports fans. Um, just a reminder, I said this at the beginning, next week we're going to do a, an experiment with Alka-Seltzer. If you don't have some, we'd love to send you some. So you can go to our website at www.striveacademy.org fill out the Google form. Um, when you give us your address, be sure to put the city and state and zip code so that we know where to send it to. And also feel free to have it addressed to your kids. Just might be fun for them to get something in the mail. Um, also later today, we're gonna post a digital breakout that you can have your kids try this week. All that they need is a device and probably a paper and pencil to, um, to try to crack the codes on. Um, there are tabs at the top where you can get the different clues and you can um, put your answers in. It'll let you know if you're right or wrong. So just a little bit of fun and it will keep your kids busy for a while. Um, make sure that you post your pictures on Facebook. Um, reply to our video with your pictures and your results later. We're also on Twitter. Feel free to tag us in pictures with the hashtag steam. Um, Steam, oh, steam with strive, sorry. Um, and please reach out to us with any questions or um, ideas. We're having a lot of fun doing this. We love to see where you guys are from and, and who's watching. So definitely give us some shout outs on Facebook or Twitter. And have fun today. And good luck. Bailey, you want to say hi to Joshua before we leave? Hi, Joshua. Okay. <laughs> All right, and Jordy, of course. All right, well, have a wonderful day, and good luck being at home with your kids and doing school. Do you want to go turn this off in a sec? Bailey? Um, and we will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Hit. Hit fish.